It's the real sound of H Town 97.9 The Box. The man had a morning show in the studio. I don't. Houston native, uh, jazz aficionado, uh, great jazz musician, uh, also with ties to hip hop. I don't know how to introduce Robert Glassman. Really uh, <laughs> Grammy Award winning. Multi. There you oh, go. Oh, multi. Sorry. Multi. The, the, the <laughs> Emmy is singing. We have one Emmy. Yo, you got it. Yeah, you got an Emmy. So yeah. Emmy. It's Emmy not slash about the awards, uh, Grammy. <laughs> Grammy Award winning <laughs> musician Robert Glasper. Yo, yo, yo. Yeah, you are all those things, man. Do you do you know where all your stuff is? Do you know where the Emmy is and the Grammys and everything? I know the Emmy's at my house. Okay. Uh I have four Grammys and I've split them up amongst family members here yeah. in Texas. Was that mandatory? No. I just gave it to him for like Christmas gifts. A Grammy for oh, Christmas? Wow. I, I let him borrow it for Christmas. You know your family loves to brag on you. Uh -huh. And nothing's better than bragging on you with the actual Grammy. <laughs> my dad, I, look, my dad has one when I gave him my Grammy, every day he would send me a picture of a random person at the gas station, like <laughs> holding the Grammy. Like, in the grocery store, holding the Grammy, church's fried chicken, holding the Grammy, like random people, like he just drive around with it. Well Rob, go back, go back. So they don't if, for those who may not be aware of who this once Elkins high school student wow. is, yes. can you can you can you tell them who you are and what you got your Grammys for? I know we said jazz musician. Yeah, but I, yeah, well, uh, yeah, I'm a, a at heart I'm a jazz musician, and and that's how I got signed to Blue Note Records in 2005. I went to Elkins freshman year. Yep. Then went to HSPVA the yep. next three years. Yes, sir. Got a full scholarship to college in New York, uh, the new school. Uh, but then, yeah, I got signed to Blue Note Records. I did a few jazz albums. Then in 2011, I did a record called Black Radio, mm -hmm. which combined all the different styles of music that I loved and all the people I've met in my years of being in New York. You know, I used to live down the street from Common. I used to live, I used to give them piano lessons. You know, really? Erica, okay. Yeah, Erica used to live like two blocks from me. So she used to come over and play me her demo, like play me uh, like, like, like um, ideas for songs, you know what I mean? On tape. Mm -hmm. Tape. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, like, I just and I remember jazz is like she don't know what you're it talking about. It was actually about. 97. It was actually 97, but she had stuff on tape. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, tape. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I just these are people I just known for a year because I met I met Bilal, the singer Bilal, in college. Is he the person responsible for getting you all hooked up with the hip hop side? Yes, of, because I, I was his music director. He got signed to Interscope Records, right? With Jimmy Iovine and them, and and from that being on the road with him, I was his music director. So we were opening up for Erica and Common and. Most Def and all, you know Jill Scott right. and all those people. So I I I've got to know them through the years because of that. And I used, I used to play in the Roots too, a lot. You know, wow. so because of my relationship with Bilal. Mm -hmm. So then I did, I did a record called Black Radio in 2011 that basically mixed all those together. And I just te I literally texted everybody like, Yo, I'm doing the record. You want to be on it? You know. <laughs> all right. And then I I really was only supposed to be half six people and then six six guests and then just my band. But ended up snowballing. All my friends were calling yeah. me like, Yo, you can't. I'm, you on the record? I can't be on. You know, right. so ended up being a whole record of all these guests, and I had the I had the option to put it in the jazz category or the R and B category for album of the year. I was like, eh, let me see what happens, and I put it in the R and B category. We won R and B album of the year. I did not know that. I thought it was for jazz. <laughs> no R and B album of the year. I got. I don't even have a jazz Grammy. All my what? Grammys, none of them are jazz. I have. So R&B album of the year, which is the first year they did not televise R&B album of the year, mm -hmm. when I won it because it wasn't good TV because no one knew who I was. Because mm. I beat out R. Kelly, I beat out. Wow. I beat out R. Kelly. I beat out. Um, what's the white dude name? Robin oh, Thicke. Thicke. And I beat out Anthony Hamilton. You know, so all these people are like, and Tyrese. Everybody's like, who is this dude? You know. Oh, you know what? That's when we all learned. I was well. the same yeah. way. I heard about I, we had Houston heard about native. And we went to Grammy. I'm like, how's this guy from Houston? We don't know who he is. Right. And yeah. he went to Elkins. You know, so, so yeah, 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 yeah. So that, yeah, you're right. You're that's right. right. You're right. You're yeah. Right. So nobody knew. Nobody knew who I was. So they were like, we're not putting that on TV. You can't put black people you don't know on TV. Get <laughs> <laughs> four. It's not Rihanna. It's not Drake. It's not, you know. So so that happened. So then the next year, I did another album, Black Radio Two. Right. And I got nominated for um, R&B Album of the Year mm -hmm. again, but then this time I just I won Best Traditional R&B Song because I did a remake of Jesus Children of America, Stevie Wonder's Jesus Children of mm -hmm. America, and I did it with Layla Hathaway. Yep. And we won Best Traditional R&B Song. Okay. Won the Grammy for that. Wow. And then I did a, I scored a movie um, with Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle did a movie about Miles Davis. Yep. Called mm -hmm. Miles Ahead. Yep. And um, I, that was my first time ever scoring a movie, and I scored. The I didn't movie. know you scored the whole movie. Scored I thought the, you just played. 
And I thought you just played music for the movie. No, 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 no. I wrote I and scored that. the whole movie. Yeah, I didn't that. when it wasn't actual Miles Davis recordings playing, that was I did true. everything else. Oh wow! Yeah. So and I, I ended up winning a Grammy for that for best soundtrack. And we beat out Straight Outta Compton. Yeah. What? We beat out Amy Winehouse Story. What? We beat out Suicide Squad. Wow. We didn't think we were going to win to the point where Don Cheadle did not come to the Grammys. <laughs> he was like, come on, come on, man. I mean, we made it this far. I was like, bro, just come. He was like, nah. I said, all right, if we win, you got to get your butt up, get dressed, and come to the red carpet. Dude, first of all, that, that particular category was like the second one that day. Mm -hmm. So it was early. It was like 9 in the morning or something. It was super early. So <laughs> it wasn't that early. It was like 12, 30 in the afternoon. Know. I called him. It's like, yo, we won. He's like, Shut up. I was like, bro, I sent my picture of me dancing with the Grammy. <laughs> <laughs> so he got dressed. And he came down to the and red carpet. And he came down to the wow. red carpet. So I had to walk the red carpet twice. So I walked the red carpet twice, you know what I mean? Because we walked it first. Walked it again with Don. About an hour later, we got something to eat. An hour later, walked the red carpet. But I didn't know at the Grammys you can't scan your ticket twice. <laughs> so they, so we, when it was time to go to the televised portion of the Grammys, they wouldn't let none of us in. They wouldn't what? let me in. What? I'm standing at the door. <laughs> And everybody's passing me like, congratulations, Robert. Man, I'm a big fan. Taking pictures. The security guard doesn't care about none of that. He's like, I don't care about none of that. You already was in, so I don't. I, I can't let you in. So it took us 45 minutes to finally get into the actual oh, televised wow. portion of the Grammy. It's so funny. And then my last Grammy is for uh, Kendrick Lamar's to, uh, yeah, to yeah, the yeah, Butterfly yeah. record. Mm -hmm. uh, I played on the. I'll play on nine songs in the record, but mm -hmm. I, uh, the if these walls could talk got a uh, hip hop song of the year mm -hmm. and I was a, a guest on that song. You've done it all and then the Emmy. And then the Emmy was for um Ava DuVernay. Um she did a film called The Thirteenth on Netflix. Oh, yeah. Actually I recorded that here. What happened was Ava called Common the very last minute. She's like, I got five days and I need an ending song for this movie I just did. Mm -hmm. And I don't have an ending song that really speaks to me. Can you do it? Common called me. I'm in Houston with my son. He said, yo, can you fly to L.A. do this song? And I was like, no, nah, I'm with my son. I can't. I'm always on tour and stuff. So wow. when I make time for my son, it's I try time. never to break it. It's That's his right. time. I was like, bro, I can't. You know, I, I can't do it. Sorry, man. I got to be here, you know, visiting family. He was like, man, I'll come down there. I was like, all right. So him and his people came down here. We found the studio. <laughs> and we came up with this song called Letter to the Free. Mm. And we, record, we, we came up with it here and did the bulk of it here. And then he flew in New York like the next day and laid his vocal, sent it to Ava. And he ended up winning an Emmy for a best song on a documentary. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. It's everything with you a story. <laughs> <laughs> None of it's easy. So all we need now is Oscar and Tony. Exactly. So, so well, is that common? common? Common, all he needs is a Tony. And he's the EGOT. There's only yeah. 12 in the world. That's what I'm saying. You need to be... You I need, need to, you yeah. Need to, yeah. We're, so we're, we're in the process of figuring out a broad... <laughs> no, really, literally, we're figuring out a Broadway play. We're going to write a Broadway play. Really? 100%. About what? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be written. But you write one. Yeah. It's going to be written, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Do you, do you know what you want to talk about? What you want it to be about? Yeah. Uh, It's going to be something social, of course. It's Obviously. common. You know what I mean? So it's going to be definitely something social, because that's what's missing in Broadway, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? A lot of it, you know, especially what's going on now, I think it's going to have something, a lot to tie in Absolutely. with, you know what I mean? So, yeah. What's yeah. your deal with Common, man? This, is this your musical hip hop Muse. brother? Yeah, Muse, I like that, Rob. Yeah, well, you know what? My, he was my first cat I hung around, for, like in 1998, when I moved to New York, Bilal was like, yo, man, my boy's a rapper. He really wants to learn how to play piano. Can you give him lessons? I was like, all right. So I used to walk over to his house and give him lessons, but I didn't know who he was because I wasn't hardcore into hip hop yet. <laughs> I didn't know who he was, so I was going to his he house. He was over there uh, trying to help Common be a better. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, we hooked up with Jay Dilla. Um, I went to Detroit with Bilal to work with Jay Dilla for like two weeks for Bilal's first record. And, you know, Common was on that, and then, then, they, then they did his album called Like Water for Chocolate. Mm -hmm. And I was in the studio watching them record Like Water for Chocolate. Mm -hmm. wow. At the same time, they were, they were and this is at um, Electric Ladyland Studios. My dormitory in was for college was across the street. So I watched <laughs> in the studio one time was Bilal on the top floor, Common doing like Wife Shot on the second floor, uh D'Angelo doing voodoo on the bottom floor, Damn. and Erica doing I wanna say Mama's Gun or something. Mm -hmm. All in the same joint. So we were like literally running up and down the stairs to other people's sessions, like checking stuff out. You know what I mean? Like that was actually a well, time period like that happened. It was like I think it was ninety nine. Yeah. But yeah, so that's that's uh, that was the time period, you know, that that uh, 
So how does this relationship, obviously, it's continued up until now because now you have this new group. Uh, August yeah, Green. Group. August Green, yeah. Yeah, so Common's last record called Black, um, called, um, um, Black America again. Um, that was that was his his last solo record. Me and Kareem Riggins. Kareem Riggins is an amazing producer and 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 a, and a drummer. Mm -hmm. Me and Kareem Riggins produced that record together for Common. So when we were all in the studio together, you know, Common was like, "Man, I love this synergy. I love the way we work together. I love the vibe, man." He's like, "Man, y'all want to do a group? You know what I mean?" I was like, yeah, we should do a group. That's cool. <laughs> because he's like, I feel like we could do stuff musically that I can't normally do if I go into just my name. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We can go other places and do other things. You know what I mean? I was like, cool, let's do it. You know, so we formed the group. Then Amazon came to us and was like, hey, y'all want to do this group and, and, and do it with Amazon Music? Let's do a, a special deal. So the... Our album came out only on Amazon. Yeah. It was a special deal with Amazon. I had to find that out the hard way. Right. <laughs> 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 well, you could have emailed me. I just could have given it to you. You know, know what I'm saying? Supporter brother. Right, yeah, right. Man, so, so uh, yeah, so for two months, it was only on Amazon. Mm -hmm. April April, and most of May, or, or March, April, it was only on Amazon. And then, like, mid-May, it became uh, available on all platforms. You know, so August Green with an E at the end of Green. So where did the name August Green come from first? It's random as hell. It's just uh, something that <laughs> Rashid, well, Common and Kareem came up with it. Uh, they're both like vegan-y people. <laughs> <laughs> What's the next <laughs> <laughs> Have we got a couple in here too, Robert? It's okay. He's a vegan-y vegan people. Look, vegan my little girl's a vegan-y people. Look, every time vegan we go in the studio, every time we go in the studio, I'd be like, "Yo, Raj, this is not hip hop, bro. Look at this. Where's the crystal? You know, ah. like, there'd be mad juice." It, we uh, all are not allowed to call him that. <laughs> no, <Noted>. but, <laughs> but he's really like a. He's really really loves jazz. Like he used to come to my my trio. My jazz shows in in like 1999, 98 stuff yeah. at my small smaller cafes in Brooklyn when I'm just trying to make some money, you know, little fifty dollar gigs. But he used to come, hang out and rhyme, would jump on stage and rhyme and stuff, you know. So we've been at this for a minute. Like he loves making things out of out of thin air. Mm -hmm. He's a he's one of the last like real like he really freestyles. Yeah, yeah you know yeah. what I mean, like he off does. the dome. Yeah, he's yeah. been here before. He's yeah, one hundred percent. And he's really good. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. so when we go in the studio, it's just like that. We walk in. Kareem might he'll he'll he, Kareem likes to go in a little early. He'll play like thirty minutes worth of drum, just beats, random beats, live drums, real drums. And then come out. We'll all just sit there and listen. And we'll all be like, "Ooh, that part." And he'll like like that part. And he'll take that part, chop that part, loop it, and then I'll go in with my keyboard and stuff. And I'll come up and I'll just start playing stuff. And, and Rashid and Kareem will be like, "Ooh, that." And I'll be like, "Oh, you like that?" You know, it's recording already. So we'll take that. Look that. This sounds right. like a hard process, bro. No, it's super easy. Because it's still, We're just jamming. Because it's still, no, because it's still hip hop. You know, it's cool. You're a producer, so you're going in, and you're finding something you like, right. and then you loop it. Right. So it's still hip hop. I mean, it's oh, jazz. Yeah. But it's still hip hop. Yeah. So then you play something. I find what I like. I loop that and Boom. I put it on top. It's still Boom. hip hop. Yeah, it's still hip hop, 100. Yeah. percent And then we loop it, and then Rashid goes into the mic and freestyles a, like a little vibe to try to get a little vibe on it. You know, and then we just go from there, and boom, that's one thing. Like, we'll go to the studio, we'll come up with like nine, ten ideas in a day. You know what I mean? Sometimes more than that, if we're just really, in the, and, and, and then it's just super easy. Then we just, we hear something, we're like, yo, who who do you hear on this? You know what I mean? We'll find out a guest, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, we just, when we think of something, we do it. Did you know you guys were going to take this on the road too and perform? Was that part? Was that was that part of it? Yes, the part, the part, the hard part was finding when because my schedule was crazy, his mm -hmm. schedule was already crazy, Kareem's schedule was crazy. But we found that November was like a perfect month for all of us. And that's why we didn't go on tour earlier. You know what I mean? So November was the perfect month for all of us. So we decided to just do this whole November tour. You know. This is crazy. Like, okay, so how all these guys who have so much going on? How do you find the time? And like. And with you, Rob, and Kareem as well, you guys are jazz exactly. musicians. Right. So that's a whole nother. It's like you like <laughs> dipping and dabbling in all these worlds. Exactly. So it's really hard because you know when I'm if I just if I'm about to play in the market, you know it, it's like one of them things where oh you can't play in the market three months before you get to the market. Right. Like somebody, right, right. You know blah blah blah. blah. So it's like I'll be like w w my manager will be like hey can we do a gig here? Rashid will be like ah I'm playing that market the the month before. Or a month after that gig, so I can't do. You know what I mean? Like, right, yeah. so it's all this song and dance stuff with all of our schedules. Kareem was just here with Diana Crawl. 
I was going to ask you guys. Drummer, you know, here so. it is, Diana Krall, incredible jazz. <laughs> this lady is incredible. I have yep. her records. So, wh what do you love the most in your world? I know you get to go through all these different places, yeah. but is there a place where I love this jazz world? I, I love this hip hop world when I'm in it. Is there a particular place that you like to be? And then you perform with so many artists, right. hip hop and jazz. I'm just curious, and I know you won't tell me. And R&B too. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah. is there a particular artist, is there a particular style you choose, and is there a particular artist from each genre that you like to work with the most? And I hate to do that to you because so I want hard. the other ones to get That's mad. Really, <laughs> That's because really your, 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 your list, I, I, you know, you get tired of looking at because you and Kareem, it's like a who's who right. of who we've played with. Right. It, in hip hop, my favorite cats to work with is two. It's Common. And it's most mm. Yasin Bay, aka mm. Yasin. Right. You know what I mean? Um, because well, I've been working with most just as long as I've been working with Common. Right. And most, I used to be most his music director, and from 2005 to like 2009, you know, I was his music director. So whenever he did a gig with a band, it was using my band, and we would rock. You know, we just did two shows. He's retired. Yeah, I'm glad you said that. Is he really going to stop? Cause I'm no, he loves it too much. He loves it too much. Thanks, I'm glad he, you told me that. Yeah, he loves it way, way too much. They're even, you know, yeah. So <laughs> Say no more. Yeah. So we just, we just did two shows in Paris and London. My band and most. We did a show in Paris and Paris, a show in London in, in March just now. You know wow. what I mean? Um, I love most and I love Rashid. And it's because they're so fluid with any all the music you know what i mean they 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 love so much music that we can throw anything at them and they'd be like oh yeah you know we love that blah, 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 blah. you know so and just they're just dope they're super dope too um on the r&b side i mean Bilal's my favorite vocalist period see these are all your friends though i know but that's not my fault it's not my fault these are all your buddies oh, man i love i love anita baker well, who don't? Rob is in love with Anita Baker. Right. Who's I just, I just played with her. Ooh, I just oh, played what? with her. What? Uh, 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 this on that one. Uh, uh, uh. So how did that work out? She was in Chicago. I was in Chicago. Well, I, I did a song. Well, we were both signed to Blue Records at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out her son was a big fan of mine. He's a DJ. Her son was a big fan of mine. And he was telling his mom about me. Blah, 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 blah. Long story short, she, I, I, I tweeted. This is like three, two years ago. I tweeted, hey, I'm about to land in L.A. What's up, LA? Something like that. She <laughs> tweeted me, like, come by the studio. I was like, Nina <laughs> <laughs> Baker, you know. She, and I Anita met her Baker, once before. Anita Baker just tweets you. She tweets me. So I'm like, I met her once before, you know what I mean? I get you, I get you. I'm like, oh, snap. It was a DM. I'm like, oh, snap. So I'm like, okay, where's the studio? I get in there, she's like, I want you to hear my new album. Mm. So I'm like, oh, snap, all right. So I listen to the album. Listen to it down, and, and, and she was like, I wish I would have known you were going to be here. I'm about to turn this album in. I we, we wish we could have done a song together. I said, I bet you I'll write your song today. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, today? What? I was like, I bet you I'll write your song today. She was like, I mean, all right, bro. I wrote a song in one hour. I sat there, wrote this song. What? At the studio? At the studio. While we were there, she was sitting there. I wrote this song. I took it to my boy's studio, where he is. He put drums on it, bass on it. We 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 you know, um, uh, you know, uh, um, built up the track. Call my other boy. So it was my boy Andre Harris, a great producer. Call my other boy Sir to come in, and write lyrics and write a melody to the song. So we demoed the song, sent it to her that evening. She learned it overnight. What? Came back in the studio the next day, and did it in one take. Come on. You lie. Oh, come on. <laughs> now he's just trying to have stories to tell. Now he's just trying to be impressed. Hey, look. All right, Rob. You can but tell hold up, hold up. Okay. We get it. Rob Flash can tell a good story. We get it. But, but now he's going too far. But check it out. Then she says, I've only had three songs in my life fit me like a couture dress to where I didn't have to change anything. And I was oh, the third Rob. Song. You were the what couture two? dress? What were the other two? The other two was uh, some song, uh, some she did with George Duke, mm. and I forget the first one. But though, but um, because I was telling her, you know, giving you the best that I got is like one of the reasons why I play the piano. That mm. song, mm. specifically that song. Mm. You know what I mean? My mom used to play a bunch of a lot of Anita Baker and a lot of Luther in the house. So between Luther's, between that, Luther and because they both used acoustic piano. Mm -hmm. You know, they both used acoustic piano all the time. You know what I mean? So those things registered with me. You know, um, um, resonated with me for. 
all my since I was in elementary school. So when I got a chance to get in with it, but anyway, long story short, the album's not coming out. But so I don't what? Know. Wait, Wait a minute. What? I don't, oh, know you do details, I don't know the details, but the album's not coming out, but I do have the song, so my dream is to hopefully, hopefully she'll let me put the song out, maybe on my Black Radio 3 album. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We'll see. There's like a million questions I have for Robert. I'm trying not to, I know. I don't okay, want to talk about the sex tape with me and Holly Berry. Ah! <laughs> I want this to be strictly about music, please. It's I don't want any controversy. <laughs> no controversy this morning. <laughs> That's behind he made me. me forget what I was okay. going to ask. That's I want to ask a it was, non, three, it was three weeks ago. It's behind me. <laughs> I want to ask a non-music question. I follow you on Instagram. I know you're a huge Rockets fan. Yes. What do you think about Carmelo coming to the team? I love it. Well, this is what I love. Okay. I love, I do, I love, I'm a Carmelo fan. When he's on, he's on. He's an offensive machine when he's on. I get it. I get it. He's getting a little older. You know what I mean? And, and maybe a little bit lazy. But I feel like it's still, uh, and he, uh, if he plays some defense, <laughs> this is my thing. I think that, look, I feel that if he play a little defense mm. and just, and, 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 and really give us what he can do on offense, I think it'll be great. I'm mad that we lost. Ariza? Mm -hmm. On Bob Mute. I'm not, we, we need we need some defensive players. We don't yeah. have any defensive players really like that. You know, Chris Paul's great. You know, he can play some defense. And Carmelo locks up defense. the paint a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Harden play doesn't play defense. He's all offense. My thing with Harden, I love Harden. He's off. He's an offensive machine. But I think he dribbles too many times for each <laughs> possession. <laughs> That's why he gets tired at the end of the game. You know what I mean? He literally out dribbled. They had a stat. He out dribbled. <laughs> he out dribbled uh, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. And uh, was it Draymond Green? All three of them. He out dribbled all three of them in one game. They wow. they had five hundred dribbles. I didn't even know they had Come. dribble count. Oh, they do. <laughs> they do. They had the one game. They had five hundred <laughs> dribbles. We had three of them. He had five fifty. Wow. Because <laughs> when you look at it, you're not gonna stop him. But it's like it's like 30, 30 of these. <laughs> he probably makes his move. He, it's tiring. You know what I mean? He letting boys know, man. You know, I was at game seven. I was there. I was right there. I watched the whole thing, and he he just gets tired at the end. You know what I mean? And it kind of almost kind of feels like he's giving up. And it was so close. You know what I mean? So I feel like if he worked on that, maybe just like a, like a Tim Hardaway one two, like ba ba. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> give me the, the crossover, get to the rim, boom. Because all too many dribbles, you get a little winded. Harden is somewhere saying, okay, note taken. Oh yeah, you know what I mean? No hey Harden, if you're hearing, this is Robert Glass for basketball extraordinaire. <laughs> <laughs> I played on the team. <laughs> it was a B team, but uh, but you were there. I was there. Actually, I didn't even really play. I was on the bench, but I was there watching uh, the games in high school. Did you make it say in the bench or on the band? On the bench. <laughs> <laughs> but I slid the bench over to the piano. <laughs> <laughs> the deal with Blue Note. You had been there for so long. That deal is up now. Uh, technically, yes. I'm. Yeah, technically, it's over. So I, I just did my last record for them. So what does this mean now? Because your whole career was at Blue Note. Yeah, I mean, and Blue Note because we talked about it earlier. Blue Note is such a well-established, uh, historic jazz record label. Yeah, it's great, and it's it's an honor to be on that record label and all that stuff. But my career has, I've I've ventured out into other areas that they don't deal with. You know what I mean? I'm not just a jazz guy anymore. You mm. know what I mean? I'm a producer. Do R and B, hip hop. I play in those things. So my you felt like my stuff has gotten. Yeah, kind of. You know, it, it can feel like that sometimes, you know what I mean? But they're very lenient in letting me do what I want to do, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So so I love them a lot, you know what I mean? But, it's, you know, it's, it is it is like, you know. Spread your wings, fly away to the place. Yeah. Robert Gladwell. Uh, Grammy Award winner, Emmy. Multi Grammy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, multi -Grammy. Get it right. Multi Grammy, Grammy, right. Grammy Award winning uh, uh, jazz pianist. I don't know producer, what to call you. Music, producer, musician, producer, composer, model. I'm a lot of things. Super <laughs> artist. Super artist. Super artist. Thank you. Love that one. So what? Okay, so, so what, what, how did, okay. Here's another serious question. Because you do have so much going on. You play in all these different worlds, yes. and you have a son. How are you managing family? Because they need their time. Kim yep. needs his time. Yeah. Uh, uh, your, your, your musicians, your your your, your career yeah. needs its time. Yeah. How is Robert managing all this? Well, you, you you try to let you try to make people not hate you as much. 
because they're going to do that. They're going to be mad. You know what I mean? This, 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 it comes to the territory. You're not going to get away from that. So it's just one of the things where you're like, okay, this month, how can I make you not hate me as much as last month? You know, so I try to, like, when I come home, I try to do these trips with my son. We went to Universal Studios in L.A. like two days ago. Mm -hmm. Did that. We come here, hang out. You know, hang out with the family, cousins. Try to do that. You know, try to make it up to them as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Try to be. I try to be super dad. You know, and then get back to his mom, and so it can be regular. So, <laughs> she should be mad at me. So, like, super dad. Here you go. You know, uh, <laughs> comes off. You know, but it's hard. I mean, you go with the flow and you try to do what you can. But at the, like the end of the day, you know, it's, they're just gonna. You know. You just try to make it up as you can. Like, like, Would you have chosen anything else? No, 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 not at all. You're definitely doing what Robert Glassman was putting to do. Yes, I think I, I think I want to. I do want to dabble in some acting, though. You know what I mean? Um, so uh, I'm taking some small steps to getting more in front of the camera. Why? Why is that well, something? Look at me. <laughs> he said, "Look at me." Duh. Uh, that's funny. Besides the fact that I'm handsome, not sure why that's funny, sir. Uh, but besides the fact that I'm handsome, apparently I'm hilarious. Everyone yeah. likes to tell me I'm hilarious, and you, you know hilarious. what I'm saying. I have my my Instagram account. I do a lot of st stupid stuff. With, but yeah, that's just who I am. I'm just that guy. You know what I mean? Funny. My dad's like that too. My whole family's like that, really. Um, so you know, so uh, yeah, I just want to. That's a part of my personality, and I've always put my personality in my music, you mm -hmm. know, in, in who I am. I never, I'm the same off stage as I am on stage, you know. You are funny. You are funny. You know? You've done so many great things. What's the little thing that you do for NPR? You oh, Tiny Desk. Oh, Tiny, tiny Desk. desk. Tiny I mean, Desk. Yeah, like, Tiny Desk was fun. They were like tripping because when you came here the first time, I'm like, man, that's Robert Glass, bro. Right. Mm -hmm. I was really tripping. Right. I'm like, man. I was tripping. Like, I saw you. I was like, no. that's mad. You don't understand. No, nah, I really was. I'm like, <laughs> don't, don't let me start it right now. No, don't start. Because it's like, <laughs> no, both going to be going back What's and forth. What's up, y'all? What you got? I'm sorry. We will be going back and forth. <laughs> but you've done so much, and you know, and you've worked with so many tremendous people. You know what? Here you go. How is it? How do I ask this question? Yes. How is it when you have to deal with those personalities, those egotistical hard personalities when you have to do what you have to do? Mm. I don't want to ask who was like the a-hole or anything like that. Right. But I, in this business, you come across them. Oh, yeah, 100%. And you have to play for them oftentimes or make... Well, well this, is the, well, this is the thing. Um, in 2005, that's when I my career changed and I didn't have to do anything I didn't want to do. Because that's when I got signed and I was doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So whenever I got into a situation that I realized, oh, mm -mm, I was, bye-bye. Would you really? Oh, I've done that quickly. I've done that to a few few artists. Oh, I want to ask. Oh. I'll, I'll say I'll say a name. Let her rip. You, you ready? I'm yeah. ready. Lauren Hill. What? what? Why, why you do Lauren Hill like that? No. 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 Why she do me like that? <laughs> I mean, if you ask any musician, it's it, most people wouldn't know unless you know musicians that's played for them. Mm -hmm. But I did this. I did a uh, a, um, a show with Lauren. This is 2008, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's from Mont Blanc Jury Corporation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She's getting half a million dollars for this show. It's a 20-minute show. <laughs> My friend was the MD. He said, "Rob, we're doing a show in L.A." You want to do this show? Mind you, two years prior, she had been calling me, trying to get me to come to her house to audition. I'm already a signed artist. I'm traveling the world doing my own thing. I don't do auditions. So I was like, sorry, I don't do auditions. If you want me, you can listen to my album. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. You can do like that. But I'm not auditioning. I don't, I don't, I don't audition. Now, Rob, that could have came across a little... <laughs> no, but this one is. She was calling me, talking about playing for me over the phone. What? I'm not... No, you're not doing that. Yeah, can you play with a phone then? Blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm like, no, but I do have albums out. Number one jazz albums on the, on the charts. If you like, you can check those out. And then you can, you know what I mean? But I'm not, I don't, I'm not auditioning. That's just, I'm not. So, so then my boy's like, yo, Lauren has a show in, the, in New York. Do you want to, you want to play? I'm like, all right, what's the deal? He's like, We're rehearsing for one week for a 20 minute show. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. So we rehearse. A whole week, like 10 hours a day. Every day she comes in and changes the show, changes what she wants to do. Completely? Completely. We're like, okay, so, you know. Anyway, the last rehearsal, she doesn't show up. Her manager shows up and says, Lauren's not really feeling the way you guys have been learning the music, so we're going to cut your pay in half. 
the last rehearsal, wow. the day before the show. We're going to cut your pay in half. Wow. First of all, we won't get paid that much anyway. <laughs> but understand, she's getting half a million dollars. Yeah. So seriously, you're going to take these five musicians and cut their pay in half? Okay, do you feel like y'all were messing up, though? Not at all. It was a super band. Not at all. We weren't. I see him, Robert Glasper. No, so, but I, I, that's a fair question. It, 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 I mean, no, we weren't. You know. we weren't. No, but she has a thing of she likes to fire bands. I can name you. I can rattle off fifteen guys off the top of my head. She will go on tour with a band, and in the city that they're doing a show, she'll hold auditions for her band. Wait a minute. Who does that? <laughs> Say that again now. She'll go on tour. Yeah. This happened to one of my boys, a few of my boys, but this one particular. They flew to Japan to do shows in okay. Japan. While she's in Japan, she's holding auditions in the hotel, in the ballroom, for her band. Damn, that's gangster, right? That's yeah. super gangster. Boy, <laughs> <Gangster. laughs> oh, it's a gangster, gangster, man. Super gangster. And nothing's yeah. wrong. Like, the bands are good. She gets the best musicians. The bands are always good. She just has a thing. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. So anyway, anyway. So the last rehearsal, they come, they go around to everybody like, y'all cool with that? We're cutting pay in half. You cool? You basically like, if you're not cool, you can leave. I didn't need that gig. I'm making money on my own. I have my own career at that time. I'm like, well, I was eating a beef patty. I never forget it. I was eating a beef patty. And I was like, when I finish, when I finish my beef patty, I'm going home. So y'all can do what y'all need to do. <laughs> but, but look, I'm the principal piano. I'm the piano. I'm the piano player. I'm the principal piano player. I know they need me. Right. The gig's tomorrow. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm like, I'm going home. I walk out. The manager runs. And first of all, before the, she even came in, my the MD, my friend, was like, just so you know, don't look her in the eye. Call her Miss Hill. So these be rumors be true? Like That's 100% true. Don't look her in the eye? Don't look her in the eye. Don't, and, and you have to call her Miss Hill. Don't look her in the eye. So in, in one, one of the days in rehearsal, she was like, uh, Robert, I need you to blah, blah, blah. I was like, okay, Lauren. Respect, I respect. Respect, respect. You know what I mean? You don't. You can't come into a situation, especially when you've already stolen all of my friends' music. Miseducation was made by great musicians and producers oh, that I know. Oh, Lord. Personally. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go what ahead, you talking about? Let us speak. You know what I mean? Oh, I want to oh, know more. Oh, oh Lord. So you got a big hand oh, off of Lord, music Robert. that you didn't even write. Oh. <laughs> you feel me, though? You got hey, a big... Robert, you know she going to hear this. 100%. This. <laughs> okay. I can hear less. This show is known for getting people... <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't oh, care. Oh my goodness. Because nothing I'm saying is a lie. Point the lie point to me where the lie is, then we can have a conversation. But if she looks at it, it's very true. It's one hundred percent true. Yeesh. That's why they got their money. Didn't, didn't you know, know what I mean? Didn't know this was gonna be a controversial interview. Yo, so Jackson. hey, and that's, hey. That's why she rearranges the music on the tour, right? Yes, all, all kinds of stuff. Checking. But look, oh, that's why. Just checking. I was wondering why. I guess the, you know whatever. But the, what I'm saying is this: I went into it knowing, okay, you steal music. You know what I mean? I knew, <laughs> I knew, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> but look, this is my oh, thing. God. I met, steal music. Look, Lauren Hill. <laughs> Look, Holy crap. I've met Stevie Wonder and hung out with Stevie. I've met Quincy Jones, hung out with Quincy Jones. I've met Herbie Hancock, hung out with Herbie Hancock. Some if breaks. those three people can be cool, Lauren Hill should be able to be cool. <laughs> you haven't done enough to be the way you are. You just have not. Mm. The one thing you did that was great, you didn't do. Wow. All right, Robert. <laughs> no, we want to know, Hannah. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Well, yeah, 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 you, wow. Come on, Cooper. You're usually doing well, that. No, no, no. no. Hey, We're like, is that how we all is? <laughs> I'm out here. Look, I'm out here. So you're trying to say she didn't make Wait the classic album? No, we not. Look, what I'm saying is she she took the credit for making the classic album. Those songs were written by other people, and they did not get their credit. She likes to take credit so she can become this super person. If you're a super person you're that, and you're that talented... Do it again. Do it. You feel me? She couldn't tune her guitar in rehearsal. We were in rehearsal. She had my boy Benji Lordy, Lordy. tune her guitar. Benji, she would come in to rehearsal like this and I go. I was gonna have a nice conversation look, about look, the whole time. Look, look at him. Look, look. She would come into rehearsal and say. She would come in rehearsal and say, Benji, guitar, and just hold it out like this. He would run and tune the guitar. Oh God. <laughs> okay. No more stories. We're, no. No more stories. This ain't, this ain't live. You can edit this later. <laughs> look. I'm telling you the truth. So anyway, she 
Anyway, I leave rehearsal. I'm like, I'm eating my beef patty. I'm leaving. I leave rehearsal. <laughs> they run after me. They run after me to the middle of the street. Like, what What can we do? I say, well, before 4 o'clock, you can wire all my money into my account because now I don't trust y'all. So if you want me to do this gig, you need to wire my money into my account within 30 minutes. That's what you can do. So I waited. They wired the money to my account, and then I went home. I didn't I didn't do the, re the rehearsal because they already suspected me. I went home. And then I came back and did the show. I did the show the next day. How did the show go? It was great. It's 20 minutes. We were like four songs. <laughs> <laughs> How did we go wrong? <laughs> but I, do, I will say this. There was one joyous moment in that, that week. There's a song called Doo-Wop, right? Starts mm -hmm. off with a piano. Mm -hmm. bling, 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 bling. Mm -hmm. So one day, she was just being a real, you know. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> uh oh Jeez. Oh, <laughs> so instead of, she was like, Doo-Wop. Instead of doing Doo-Wop, I went, Bloom, 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 bloom. <laughs> That's the intro to Joyful Joyful. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she looked at me and sang a, a verse and a chorus. We did a verse and a chorus of Joyful Joyful. <laughs> and then she looked at me and was like, okay, back to this. You know, so for a minute, like a minute and a half, she, we got no, the she Lauren. Normalized. Yeah, she normalized and became. So it, it's in there. I really feel like she's in, in her. Um, something happened. Yeah. People can change. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not shitting on her forever and nothing like you know coming up but that's just stuff that really happened and you're going to have to take accountability for it at some point mm. you know what i mean and then you're good like maxwell i used to play with maxwell you know i was playing maxwell's the whole pretty wings 2009 to mm -hmm. 2014. Mm -hmm. the nicest guy one of the nicest artists i've ever played with mm -hmm. you know good guy whenever he came to houston i was on piano you know like good, great, great guy but he'll tell you he was like man my early years you couldn't have been in my band in my early years because he said i was a whole different person really? you know yeah he was a whole different kind of dude like, and he can be honest and say that i was tripping he was tripping and he said it and he wasn't like that with us at all you know what hmm. i mean at all so people can change you know what i mean so i hope she does change you know but it's it that those were real things she disrespected a lot of people a lot of people a lot of musicians with families just cutting you know we just did something together but it was remotely you know what i mean we did a tribute to nina simone album mm -hmm. It was called uh, Nina, Nina Simone Revisited. She produced the first half, and I produced the second half of it. So I produced, the first half, she sung all the songs, and she used her band. Mm -hmm. The second half, I used other art. I used Jasmine Sullivan. I used um, Andre Day. Oh, nice. I used uh, Gregory Porter. Nice. I used Usher. Wow. I used Mary J. Blige. And I used somebody else. So that's like half and half, but it's, it's on. You know, you can get it anywhere on any platform. But but you know, we're, we we're, we're in the same room. But RCA was like, Robert, we want you to produce this album. And then they came to me a few days later, like, Lauren wants to do it too. Will y'all do it together? Shoot the first half, do the second half. You know. Wow. Well, you've uh, <laughs> this morning. Uh, let's talk about that August Green concert. When yes, is that going yes. to <laughs> So August Green. Uh, the concert is going to be at the Smart Smart Financial Center, November 24th. Uh, this I love year, Robert, y'all. November 24th is going down. Actually, we we are we're doing remixes this month, so we're putting out remixes from the August Green album. Oh, really? Okay. Every day, every week, starting next Friday, every Friday, and the first week of September. So we did like four remixes. So we did a re on the August Green project. We did a um, we did a version of Optimistic from Sounds of Black. Yeah. With Brandy. We played that. Yeah, we play, That's we play. the version we played. Yeah, and they shit on me, Robert, but for I that. They, they shit on me oh, for that. They started making like, fun of me. I wow. Because I picked it out. I was like, hey, no, man. because. Every Friday we okay, play. Every Friday, that's our song. Every Friday we play the and, original um, yeah. Optimistic from right. Sounds of Black. I never heard it before, and I was brand like, man, and that is the classic. As soon as the August Green album came out, I pulled it up. I was like, Monday morning, we got to play this, and we played from it. here on out. We killed it though. From here on out, I love it. We played the rock yes! version. Come on, there we go. Now check it out. Every Friday we play rock. I just did. Hold on.